Welcome everyone to our first ever Why Wessex webinar. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Melissa Demota. I'm the marketing manager at Wessex. Most of you have already heard of Wessex and know what we do. For those that don't, uh, stay tuned. We're about to blow your mind. As passionate stewards of our world, Wessex champions healthy soils and clean water, which is a fancy way of saying we care about the world that we live, work, and play in. Oops, sorry. Being our first ever webinar, there are bound to be some technical errors and bloopers as you have just seen. We hope that you laugh along with us and feel free to ask any questions at any time during the webinar today. Uh, there should be a Q&A panel on your webinar screen. Our speakers today, some of you may know, are Lauren McCallum, our Northern and Eastern Ontario Regional Sales Manager, Shauka Dykstra, our Southern Ontario Regional Sales Manager, and Brett Stiles, our Western Ontario Regional Sales Manager. Then there's our king, our leader, Phil Cron, Director of Business Development. Before I pass things on to our sales team, just a few housekeeping notes. You, our audience, are in listen-only mode, which means we cannot hear you. You are on mute. Please enter any comments, questions, or even insults in the questions tab. We will reserve time following today's presentation for questions and answers. Following today's webinar, you will receive a follow-up email with a copy of the presentation. So if you have to leave us, and we hope that you don't, no worries, we'll keep you posted. We appreciate if you spread the word today using the hashtag WhyWessexWebinar on all social platforms. We will also be active on social. And we have a technical team behind the scenes ready to help if you are having any technical errors. Simply raise your hand or type in a question in the Q&A tab that you see on your screen. Sometimes logging off and back on with the same link also works. Before we move on to our agenda for the day, here's a short poll. I have a question will pop up on your screen and we ask that you answer it. All questions are anonymous, or sorry, all answers are anonymous, but keep in mind there is no right or wrong answer for this poll. So you should see that poll on your screen now. And the question is, what is your weapon of choice in a zombie apocalypse? Now, I also asked this question earlier today to my son who is four years old, and he said, of course, the Paw Patrol. Don't think I would trust the Paw Patrol, but feel free to uh, plug in your answer there and we'll share them shortly. Your options are a rifle, barbed wire baseball bat, chainsaw, crossbow, a shotgun, or a rubber band. I mean, could come in handy. So we've got some answers coming in and uh, we'll share that shortly. So on your screen, you may or may not see the results. If you don't, again, we will be sure to share these with you. Um, but it looks like 64% of us online would choose the shotgun. I believe that is a pretty smart choice. Although if you run out of ammunition, you know, all the power to you. <laughs> so I will uh, take that off of our screen and uh, get back over to our agenda for today. Our agenda. Uh, today, we'll start off with Lauren, who will walk us through the Wessex way, what we're all about, and a bit of our history. And then Shoka will talk to us about the work Wessex does, including some of our services and his experience of working in the field. Brett will join us to discuss innovation at Wessex, including our ITRs. What is an ITR? Stay tuned to find out. Our sales team will also talk a little bit about our fleet and of equipment that we have ready to serve you better. And last but not least, we'll hear from our great leader, Phil Cron, and some upcoming on some upcoming Wessex projects, as well as some of our partnerships that we are proud to discuss. Now that's enough out of me. Over to you, Lauren. Thank you, Mel. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, great speaking with you all today. So we're going to get into the who is Wessex, the Wessex values, services, and safety. So. so Back in April 2000, uh, two brothers started Wessex. How they came up with WESUC or Wessex, it's up to you how you say it. But um, the family's been in this industry for over 50 years. It's privately owned and operated uh, as a Canadian company. Currently, we have 111 employees and growing daily. Uh, Wessex's focus is on environmental benefits to be leaders in the industry for the use of innovative new waste solutions and technology. So on to what is Wessex values. So 
uh, we've worked hard on this, who we are and, and how we wish to operate. We want to be respectful to each other and to our clients and to our environment. We want to be responsible stewards of our environment. We have, want to have joy in everything we do every day. And we also want to make sure we have equal work, family value balance. So our services are many, as some of you on this call uh, have witnessed. We seem to expand as your needs request, but some of them are tank cleanouts, pump station cleanouts, lagoon cleaning, mobile dewatering, haulage, CCTV inspection, vac services, grouting, spot repair, uh, lagoon storage, land application under NASM or ASM, flushing, swabbing, NASM planning, uh, stormwater pond cleaning. Uh, this is most of what we do, but some. So our Wessex safety, uh, we've worked very hard at this. Cassandra and her group are doing a fabulous job. But the main thing is to make sure every member of our family gets home to theirs every day. Uh, CORE is, is a guideline that we follow and we're certified. Uh, just gone through an audit recently with this. Um, but uh, we work hard to make sure our jobs that we do on your sites are done in a safe manner for employees. So I ask everyone to, if you have any questions, to feel free to post them. Uh, and at the end of this, we will uh, uh, make sure we answer all your questions. However, we're asking that you wait until the end of the webinar. Now, Shoka's turn. So, hi everybody. Um, you know, as, as you heard, it's um, Shoka. The name is Dutch. So if you uh, get the pronunciation wrong, don't feel too bad. Everybody's been doing it my whole life, so no problems there. Um, my part of the presentation is around uh, where Wessex is innovative and what we're doing to be innovative continually. Um, so the majority of our innovation revolves around um, the beneficial reuse um, of organic material um, to create clean water and, and fertile soil um, and, and multiple different aspects. If you see there on the screen, the um, noon lagoon crawler um, is something that we really pride ourselves in. It's actually a lot of fun. I personally have not had the chance to drive it, but essentially it's a big um, remote control crawler. It's the size of a, a truck and it goes into the lagoon, mixes and agitates the material in order that we can pump it out of the lagoon and stir it, or sorry, apply it to a farmer's field for beneficial reuse as a fertilizer. Um, and I believe we'll have a video on that afterwards that Melissa will share. Um, and then secondly, in the round, or an ITR as we call it for short, um, it's a dewatering, a mobile dewatering program uh, that we use all over the place for different applications, whether it be a lagoon or a digester um, or something of that nature, where we basically reduce the amount of volume. We dewater the volume down um, from a liquid concentration into a solid cake, um, which essentially reduces the cost and impact of the, the volume of material going to a landfill. And that's, uh, we find there's a benefit, or a benefit there to the clients um, and the municipal clients that we work with um, in regard to cost going to landfill. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna play a 20 second clip of our lagoon crawler. Uh, the video tends to be a little bit glitchy as a note. Uh, so there may be some technical difficulties. If you do not hear or see the video, rest assured, we will be sending it as a follow-up. Um, a link to the video will also be shared in the chat eventually. So. And there you go. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Mel, who's going to walk us through our next poll question, I believe. That's great. Thank you, Shoka. Uh, yeah, so again, we're going to just launch another poll. This one is not about zombie apocalypses, but um, just a little bit of information that we would appreciate from you. Um, so up on your screen shortly, you should see a poll. The question is, 
what services would you like to hear more about from Westic? Essentially, we want to know what information you're looking for, uh, whether it's us sharing it on social, um, whether it's in webinars that we're doing in the future. Um, today's webinar is meant to be an overview of all of our services, as well as our safety and get to know our staff a little bit face to face. Um, but we do plan to do some um, more specific webinars in the future. So it, we want to give you the information that you're interested in, not any information that you're not. Um, so it will be really helpful to us if you are answering the poll. It looks like we've got a lot of uh, responses coming in, so we appreciate that. I'll leave that up for about another 10 seconds uh, to give some people some time. Um, looks like so far, Lagoon Cleanouts is uh, popularity, dewatering. Um, and other services, CCTV and flushing, of course. Yep, uh, all makes sense. So I'll share the results shortly. And I'll just give you another five seconds to answer for anyone who's kind of multitasking and listening at the same time. Okay, looks like things have slowed down. So I'm just gonna publish those results. You may see them on your screen. Uh, looks like Lagoon Cleanouts is uh, the popular choice. So again, we appreciate this feedback. Um, of course, we'll touch on all of our services, but we just wanted to know um, in terms of our attendees today, uh, what sort of information would be most valuable to you. So thank you very much for, um, for sharing. Um, okay, and so um, I think next we're going over to Brett. Um, everyone, uh, yeah, that's right. Over to you, Brett. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us today and spending some time with us. Uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, about any of the topics covered today, enter them into the Q&A section and we'll respond uh, during this Q&A session. Uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our uh, recent news and some experience uh, with uh, that Wessex has gone through uh, in the last couple of weeks and months. So the first one is, is if you've heard that our application for NASM storage in Sarnia, Ontario has been approved. Uh, we now have more capacity to serve you by managing your non-agricultural source materials or NASM waste such as pulp and paper, municipal sewage biosolids, yard waste, fruit and vegetable peels, and any other food processing waste. Secondly, with regards to our experience, uh, recently we were, uh, Wessex was called out to Kitchener-Waterloo where they had a massive uh, force main break. Uh, we actually mobilized with two vac trucks plus eight tankers to the site. Uh, it, the, the break was on a roundabout so that the uh, transit was a little bit uh, difficult to work around, but after pumping 24-7 and installing some uh, frack tanks on site, we are able to reduce our trucks down to three to control the flow, and we were on site for a good 10 days, uh, 24 hours a day, hauling waste to the wa local wastewater treatment facility. Also, recently, we were uh, contracted out to do the uh, Humber Wastewater Treatment Plant Aeration Tank Cleanout. Uh, we were involved in this, uh, the vacuum and pumping of all liquids and solids from one of their aeration tanks. Uh, the work was very tedious, it took about six, or sorry, two and a half weeks uh, with a six man crew uh, as the tank was uh, constructed a little bit differently than what we're, con what we're used to. Uh, but it, as I said, it did take two and a half weeks, very successful clean out and uh, customer was extremely happy. And now I believe Mel, I'm to pass this on to, uh, to Phil. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Brett, thank you so much uh, for that. I noticed you still haven't painted the back of your wall, though. Um, sorry, internal joke, guys. Um, I get to talk about, I think, the, the greatest slide here, which is the WESIC partnerships. Um, it, being in business for 20 years, uh, to have partnerships like WESIC has got, it means we've got to be doing something right. Um, and I think it's with a lot of pride and execution that WESIC has been able to build up partnerships um, of this magnitude over the last 20 years. Now, you're just seeing a couple of um, names on the slide. I want to say about 12 or 15 on the slide. We have over 250 really strong partnerships. So um, just in case you're wondering, how did we pick this? Well, these names, what we did is we looked at really over the last couple of years, who have we been working closely with and um, and who do, who do we put up here? Um, there's, like I said, there's a lot more that can go up here. And we really appreciate everyone's hard work that uh, we get to deal with on a daily basis. Now, in terms of um, a, a partnership, 
when we look at it, we can look at it from a municipal standpoint, we can look at it from um, an organizational standpoint, and we can look at it from a private company standpoint. So first of all, on the municipal standpoint, you'll see a couple of names up there. City of Sarnia would be one, Holton, uh, York Region, uh, North Middlesex, and uh, Chatham Kent. So what I would encourage all of the municipal uh, staff on this call today to do is to reach out to your uh, regional sales manager. You've met the three of them today. Um, now, as you can see, we are getting better at doing virtual meetings, but we do like in-person meetings and we do bring coffee when we have in-person meetings. And the suggestion is to sit down and really talk to our staff, our regional sales managers about the services that we offer. We now have eight specialized services and it does take a little bit of time to go through. So I would encourage that you reach out to your regional sales manager and, and develop a, um, a time where we could sit down and do a, a presentation with you. When it comes to organizations like Aqua, um, you know, we, we do a lot of work with Aqua. We've got a lot of um, uh, innovative uh, discussions going on. And that comes down to synergy. It comes down to what's best for both um, organizations. And really what that comes down to at the end of the day is culture. Lorne had mentioned our culture, joy, respect, balance, and responsibility. That's what we look for in um, our partners as well. And then when you go to the private sector, um, we've got a really large, diverse selection of uh, private customers. And I think the brilliance of WESIC is that we can adopt and adapt our services to each um, individual uh, client to make sure that we're doing the right job for, um, for all of our um, uh, clients out in, the, out in the industry there. Um, when I look at uh, our partnerships overall, we're offering all of our services to these clients today, and um, we want to continue to build our partnerships. One of the uh, the thoughts that I've always got is how do we increase our partnerships from 250 to 1,000? Um, would love to see that, and I think what that comes down to is uh, having a clear understanding of what our partners are looking for, having a clear understanding as to what WESIC can offer, and making sure that we deliver on what is being expected. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. So what's next? So WESIC recently, um, Brett had just mentioned that we have purchased um, a lagoon in Sarnia, uh, two lagoons. We are uh, always looking for additional storage opportunities. If there are decommissioned lagoons out there, uh, we would welcome the opportunity to set up a discussion uh, to see if there is capacity from both sides to um, to enter into a uh, letter of intent and then to move forward with uh, potentially a purchase of the lagoons. Um, we are looking at uh, podcasts coming up soon. Uh, Mel had mentioned that as well. Uh, podcasts uh, like this, I think it's meant to be fun, interactive uh, a little bit, uh, but engaging. And um, we're going to be uh, starting those fairly soon. We're going to be starting the first one with Shane and Hank Van Bean. Uh, the two owners of this company, and um, understanding why WESIC was even um, developed and started. Um, and then we're also looking to develop a, um, a ninth division, which would be stormwater pond treatment and uh, clean outs. And if you do have stormwater ponds and you do want to have a, a discussion on what our methodology is, we again would, would welcome that opportunity as well. Um, that's it for me. Um, Mel, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, I think now we're going to take on some questions. So what I'll do is I'll invite all sales and Phil, if you want to join us again, you can um, just come on back with your um, cameras on and unmute yourselves. And uh, we'll just go through a few questions from the audience. We do have a few. Um, as you can tell, we're about 20 minutes in here, guys. So we do have a good amount of time for questions, uh, which means we should get to everyone's questions today. Um, now, the first one is, um, I think Lauren might have mentioned this in services, so really anyone can answer this. As part of your services, you mentioned grouting and spot repair. What exactly is grouting? Anyone want to take that, Brett, maybe, or Lauren? Sure, okay, wants. you want to take that? Okay. Sure. <clears throat> All right, well, um, 
I had, I worked in the CCTV spot repair and flushing division at Wessex here for three years prior to getting into sales. So I know a little bit about uh, what it takes to do the spot repair and grouting. Essentially, um, grouting is to stop the inflow of groundwater into your uh, sewer system from a municipal standpoint, um, or if you have private pipe as well on at your facility. Um, we find the reason that it's important to stop the inflow of the uh, groundwater is because it increases your process cost. Obviously, a drip, dripping tap or a leaking hose, that's a lot of water that comes out there. Um, in a sewer pipe, it's typically running all the time. So you use a type of uh, it's a ambient cure mixture, which just means it cures with time. Um, it's also a two-part mix. So uh, it's mixing like an epoxy together and you pressurize it into a crack or a void in a pipe um, that fills that void, stops the water from coming in um, and hardens around the pipe to also maintain the structural integrity of it. And then additionally, spot repair um, would be to repair a crack um, in a sewer pipe, in a concrete pipe or a PVC pipe or something like that. Again, just to maintain the structural integrity of that pipe, give it a longer lifespan um, and just basically get the be best bang for your buck. It's a lot cheaper than just lining the entire line. Uh, we can go in and cure it using a, or fix it using a pre-impregnated UV liner. Um, essentially, you just go in, you inflate a big bag that pressurizes the repair to the side of the pipe. Then you turn on some LED lights inside the balloon, so to speak. Um, that'll harden the material using that UV light to cure it. And your pipe is strong, as strong or stronger than it was before. Awesome. That is quite the information. Thank you, Shoka, for sharing. I hope that answers that person's question. Um, another question. Does Westic, uh, sorry, I'll do, I just missed one there. What happens when materials are not approved by OMAFRA for land application? Where does that material go? Uh, anyone can answer this one as well. I'll take this one there, Mel. Um, <clears throat> so unfortunately, if it's not approved by OMAFRA, then the material cannot come to the lagoons because then it will not be applied to uh, for land application. Um, if it does meet um, NASM, then it can be uh, land applied. If it doesn't, then it would have to go to landfill. Therefore, what we'd be able to do is dewater the material to a cake to reduce your transport and uh, to, to the landfill so that it, it ensures that it passes the slump test. I think that's an excellent answer. Um, another question here, does Westick do cleanouts for stormwater ponds? We did, we did talk a little bit about them. And if so, what is the process or even roughly the cost if you could? Lauren, maybe you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that because I'm currently working on a uh, pilot project for a municipality. And all three ponds I'm looking at need three different applications so it's kind of difficult to explain but what we're basically trying to do for the storm pond project is remove the sediment without removing um, the water volume so returning a cleaner water with the sediment removed um, that's the process dollar cost it's going to vary depending on how big of a pond or or storm uh, pond that that we're cleaning out, but uh, it, it's going to vary. Okay, I think that's understandable, right? Um, would you say a clean out for stormwater pond is anything similar to a lagoon, or is it entirely different? I would say they're very similar. Um, uh, a lagoon, we tend to remove all the material, so that that they can do any repairs on the bottom if it's a lined lagoon with with uh, polymer or clay uh, tends to be a full clean out where storm ponds that's not generally what they're looking for they're looking to recapture the ability of the storm pond to take in storm water okay. perfect yeah that was sort of a question of my own because i wasn't even i wasn't sure myself Yep. Um, so uh, another question has come through, and I just want to send out a reminder to everyone. Uh, if you want to ask questions here, that's great. If you want to also share anything on social or ask questions there, we're going with the hashtag YWESIC webinar today. Uh, so feel free to share on social, ask your questions there. We'll also be looking um, at our social feeds today to see if anyone uh, 
has any questions there. But we do have a few more coming in from the audience, so this is great. Uh, we're going to continue rolling with it. We've got plenty of time, so stick with us. Uh, another question is how to set up a meeting with Wessick for additional discussions. Um, Phil, if you're able to, I know you were having some technical difficulties there, but if you're able to, maybe you could take this one. I'm oh, absolutely, Mel. Thank you. Um, how to set up a meeting. Um, hopefully, um, everyone can see the um, emails below there with uh, Lorne, Shulker, uh, Brett, and Lee. Uh, Lee is our inside sales um, uh, manager, and he uh, looks after um, making sure our guys are uh, attending to all of our um, opportunities. If you reach out to uh, Lorne Shoka or Brett based on where your territory is, um, that, that would be the best way to set up a meeting. Um, otherwise, uh, you could always email myself. Mine's real simple, phil at wessick.com. Um, and um, then we could um, uh, coordinate uh, with one of our regional sales managers to get in touch with you. Uh, does that answer your question, Mel? Yeah, I think that should. I've also just shared a link to our contact page in the chat to everyone. So um, that's an easy, quick link if you want to click that. Um, Lauren Shoka's, Bill's, and Brett's information is all on that page, and you can contact them any way that you prefer. Um, a question from our audience Do you offer aeration services as part of the lagoon maintenance? Anyone can answer this one. Um, I'll take that, Mel. If they mean the servicing of the aeration heads and pipe, I would say no, that needs to be uh, a mechanical company, but we certainly do clean out aeration tanks on a monthly basis for various clients. Perfect. So that was an anonymous question. Um, if you are the one that asked that question and you need a little bit more information, feel free to, again, reach out to either of our sales uh, managers here on the call today, and they'll be happy to help you out with more info. Um, another question, and this is a very, very serious one. This one is for Brett. Uh, what color is the paint on your back wall? <laughs> it is a green. It is like a lime pastel color green and uh yeah phil does not like it uh so i refuse to paint it just to uh to get under phil's skin every other friday morning on our calls so thank you for that i hope you like it more than phil does <laughs> i think that's a fantastic color i don't see how you could ever be you know stressed or miserable in a lime green room yeah so thank you thank you for that that is, that's a great question. Like I said, very serious one. Um, so it looks like questions from the audience have slowed down. We don't really have anything else coming through. Um, so it looks like that might be it for today. That does bring us up to a half hour as well. So the timing is perfect. Uh, however, if you do have a question or a concern pop up after today's presentations, then please feel free to contact any of our regional sales managers and they'll be happy to reply. Again, uh, the contact information page is linked into the chat there on your Q&A panel. So feel free to click that and uh, all their contact information is there for you. We really cannot thank you enough for joining us today. Your time is valuable to us. That's why we wanted to keep it short and sweet. Uh, we hope you have at least one takeaway from today's presentation. We'd also greatly appreciate it, but it is not mandatory if you could participate in our post webinar survey. This survey will pop up automatically on your screen when you close the webinar window. Everyone who registered today will receive a follow up email with today's recording as well. Uh, keep your eyes open in your inbox as well for future WESIC webinars. Our upcoming webinar series will focus on each of our services we offer in more depth. So if there's a certain service you're looking for um, more information on, uh, keep in mind that those webinars will be coming up. Uh, thanks again to all of our speakers today as well, uh, but most importantly to our attendees. Without you, this would not have been made possible. We hope that everyone stays safe out there, stays healthy, and has a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Thanks, everyone.